He's beautiful. It's like he's not even human. Dyed red, everything red, red in the setting sun shining upon the blood. This scene, which should only be gruesome. However, instead, it was like an amenable painting. We were now surely in the midst of some extraordinary tale. This is Sonia's initial impression of Griffith, a man that seems larger than life and exudes an absolute perfect moral code. It's easy to see why the young, happy-go-lucky girl became so enraptured by his presence. What's more, she views Griffith as the absolute moral ideal, a man that is beyond reproach and the savior of humanity and monsters alike. In her mind, she believes Griffith has no flaws, and she thusly exalts him as such. In fact, a telling bit of information is revealed in Chapter 246 at Virtanis Harbor, and I quote, Once upon a time, there was an ugly duckling. The ugly duckling was different from everyone else, so she was ostracized. You see, the ugly duckling was a swan. She was a kite. One day, a nasty murder of crows attacked the duck's pond. The meek ducks couldn't fly away, so they just quacked in terror. However, everyone was captured. The young kite was convinced she was just an odd duck and was also captured because she did not know how to fly. Just then, it was the king of the birds who saved the ducks. He was a white hawk. The white hawk brought his servants, the dragons, and in the blink of an eye, finished off the crows. Hawks and kites are something like kinsfolk. For the first time, the young kite met one of her own and realized she could fly. The young kite was special. Only she could fly in the same sky and feel the same wind as the hawk. Now there's a great deal of symbolism within this story and given the fact that Sonia is a prophetess, there may be clues about future events to come. Sonia views Griffith as someone above everyone else. In addition, she also views herself in the same light. Hence the reason she flies at the same altitude as Griffith. Because of this, she has a slightly condescending attitude to others. And this is most notable in her conversations with Mule. And because she has such a high image of herself and Griffith, it makes me wonder what would happen if that image were destroyed, tarnished, broken in her mind. What if the angelic being that she knows as Griffith is revealed to be the Antichrist, the devil, that is the complete opposite? What would this do to her psyche, and how would she respond to it? Now you may be wondering, how would Sonia ever find out that Griffith is Femto? He keeps this fact concealed from everyone, except for Zod. I believe recent events in Chapter 367 could be the impetus for Sonia finding out that Griffith is in fact Femto, one of the God Hand members and the rulers of Demon Kind. Now remember in Chapter 367, Griffith had Casca's body in his arms. Now it's postulated that Griffith is going to take Casca back to Falconia, so on full moons, he doesn't travel a far distance from his homeland and isn't put in a vulnerable position. But here's the thing, if he takes Casca back to Falconia, there's a high probability that Sonya's going to see Casca. Now, why is this important? Because Sonya has the ability to read minds. Remember when Shirko was using her thought transference at Virtanis Harbor? Well, Sonya heard the conversation, which makes me believe that not only can she hear conversations, but she can see a person's past by delving into their mind, similar to what Shirka does. And if this is true, just the mere fact of seeing Casca would allow her to see Casca's memories of the eclipse. And therefore, she would see Femto, i.e. Griffith, raping Casca. How would Sonya react to this information? We know that when Griffith used the demon army to attack the Ganishka-like clones, she was in favor of this because she saw Griffith as the highest moral standard. So whatever means was necessary to attain peace and prosperity was worth it. Because in her eyes, even though Griffith was commanding the demons, he wasn't a demon himself. He was still an angelic-like being. A god, if you will. But what if this image is tarnished? What if he is seen for what he really is? Would she still ignore it? Or would that image that she created in her head be shattered? And how would she react to that? Sonia has a purely innocent personality and wishes ill will to no one. Therefore, finding out that Griffith not only leads the demon army, but is also a demon himself, might be too much for her to handle. 
Furthermore, because she's a prophetess, she might see a future in which Casca is locked up or harmed by Griffith, further shattering the image of Griffith in her head. So would she oppose Griffith, and how would she do it? She doesn't have powers where she could fight him or the demon army. How would she go about doing this? I believe there's a way in which she could subvert Griffith by helping out the Guts' party. An important story to keep in mind is a Japanese mythological tale in which the god sent a golden kite to Jimu, who is also a descendant of the gods. Now, one of the things that the kite did was lead the enemies of Jimu away from the battlefield, thus allowing Jimu to avoid the battle that may have killed him. Now, we already saw an incident in which Sonya was leading Griffith's army through the battlefield. In fact, we saw it twice. Now, would she turn on Griffith and purposefully lead them? to their own demise? And would she use her thought transference with Shirka to help her out and give her the most advantageous battle plan to take down Griffith's demon army? It's very possible. And why would she do this? Why would she help out Shirka? Well, at Virtanis Harbor, she definitely developed a friendship with Shirka. And given the fact that she decided that Shirka was an altruistic person that was very nice and trustworthy, I wouldn't be surprised if she decided to help out Shirka and the Guts party. And she could do this all under the radar without Griffith's party ever finding out about it. Now, another possibility that I considered is that if Casca gets locked up in Falconia, we could have a similar situation to the Golden Age arc, where Guts' party goes to save Casca from prison, much in the way that Guts and Casca save Griffith from prison. Now, the way that they could do this is that Sonya could lead them in via thought transference. She could give them directions through the castle and save Casca. And then the last bit of information that I want to consider is the story of the sage that was locked up by King Geyseric. Now, if you remember, the sage spoke out against the ills of King Geyseric's kingdom. Essentially, he wasn't a fan of King Geyseric and thought he was doing the wrong thing. Now, what if Sonya starts speaking out against Griffith? What if she starts to rally the Falconia citizens to oppose Griffith? We know that causality is circular, or to put it another way, it's a spiral. So even though events are not identical to a thousand years ago, they are very similar. And one would think with Griffith playing the role of Geyseric, you know, running the kingdom and causing all this chaos, someone would speak out against it. Could that someone be Sonya? So the ultimate question then becomes, will Sonya betray Griffith? And you may be saying to yourself, Sonya is absolutely devoted to Griffith. There's no way that she would betray him. This is true. However, if you consider Carl Jung's psychological model, everyone has a shadow. Everyone has that deep, repressed half that they don't reveal to others. So even though you may outwardly say that you support someone and you love them, Deep down, there is that potential that they could be your worst enemy in the future, that you could hate them most of all. Remember, it's not anonymous people that we hate the most, it's the people that we love the most that we end up hating the most. Because they're so intertwined with our lives, they have the greatest potential of damaging our lives. And this is what happened to Casca. Because Griffith was so pivotal to her life, and because Griffith saved her from certain doom, she henceforth became psychologically broken because of what Griffith did to her. In her mind, she could not accept it. And I believe the same could happen to Sonya. Because she put Griffith on such a high pedestal, that if that pedestal were to tumble, she would eventually resent it and loathe it, and it would become the bane of her existence. But tell me what you guys think of this theory, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the flip side.